Hello there. That took a hot minute. How is everyone today? Welcome to Art Snacks. I'm Amy Murray with Sugar Hill Art Studio and today we're going to play with deli paper and watercolors or anything really. You don't have to use water. Actually, I might use acrylics because that's what I have in front of me. I have Tombow markers, um, all kinds of fun things. So yeah, come on, let's get going. If you're on, give me a hello. Let me know you're here. Say hi, hi, hi. Um, more so because I have so many new peeps. Um, let me know where you're watching from because that's always super fun to see where everybody is kind of tuning into. All right, I am going to pop you down. We'll start the tutorial because it is Art Snacks. I'm running late and I try not to keep you on for more than 30 minutes. All right, I'm going to lift you up. A Woo, sorry, sorry, sorry. I'll lift you up a little bit just so I get a good wide view here today. All right, so painting on deli paper, it's super fun. There's a thousand things you can do with it after you've, um, you know, played and set a bunch aside, just like we do with the jelly prints or anything else. Love to use deli paper in my journals. All right. So I got this big, gigantic box straight off of, um, let me, sorry guys, sorry, 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 sorry. Um, 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 sorry. Um, I got this straight off of Amazon. S was not expensive, super cheap. You can use tracing paper um, if you want a thicker, more solid feel, the vellum. Vellum tends to be a little bit more expensive though. Deli paper is one of those things that I absolutely love to have hanging around um, when I'm playing in my journals. Um, over in creatives, we're kind of playing with some of our, um, our joy journal. And it's in a bunch of parts, but I want to show you like how fun if you just kind of paint on a piece of deli paper, right? Just to throw into your journals, how fun that can be. Okay. So watercolor, acrylic, um, even Tombow markers work. Actually, this one is little Tombow markers, which are always fun, right? You can just grab a Tombow and, oh, let's do this. Let's kind of, I'm just going to put a little bit there. And then on a completely other note, I'm going to just be in whimsical because that tends to be more my style. And I'm just going to randomly, okay, this is with Tombows. I wanna show you all the different things, but try not to overwhelm you too much. Um, let me just grab any brush here, some water. And I'm gonna start with the orange and I'm just going to kind of wet it. All right. I am working on the non-slippery slide side, and I'll show you what it does on the other, on the slippery side. I think I like that better for the Tombows. All right. Let's just flip this over. This is the slippery side, this one. Let me just show you the difference. It's gonna work better. We'll do the reverse. All right, there's that. I'll we'll grab the same purple. We'll just reverse that one. You see how it kind of already looks a little bit different. And I want a little bit more of that double line there. All right, and some water. There we go. And have that slippery side and I am just you see how quick I'm being it's because once these dry you can come back in with your Posca pens with any um, ink or uh, acrylic paint pen that you have gel pens okay but you see like this was done on the opposite side it's it doesn't matter 
I mean, it does on how things are taken. But we can take acrylic paint and kind of throw that on here. Let me kind of flip that over. Oh, let's see what we have. Let's do some primary red, some lemon yellow, and what do we have here? Grabbing whatever peacock. Let's just play. Let's do some yellows here. I don't even have any white. All right. Um, what do I want to do? Let's just do some insides. Let's just do some insides. Now, when you're doing this, you might want to think, like, especially if you're using it for a um, envelope or a pocket. These are some of my favorite ways to make pockets. Consider the size of your journal, okay? So if you're working in a thinner journal, right, your pocket is only going to be so wide, so big. If you're working teeny tiny, right? You got to think about your pocket. So if I was to put a pocket in my mini journal here, you know, the, this is, I'm all, I'm going to miss all of the, I need a smaller overall pattern. Uh, we have this one here. I could easily, you know, put some fun pockets in there. So as you're creating your, um, pocket design, whatever it may be. It may be small, repetitive, like wallpaper design, or it might be something big and fantastic and glorious that you want to use. Um, you know, think about that as you are... I was looking to see if I had any white. Oh, here's my jug. Here's my big jar. I just want to lighten that primary red. You guys know I'm not a huge red, red person. I tend to lean towards the magentas and the pinks just because I don't have any real reason why. I'm just going to mix, mix a little bit up here. And I don't even know what flower I would be working off of. I don't have my list in front of me. And so let me just kind of, I just want to demonstrate. That's the fun thing about art snacks is I'm demonstrating to you. So it's quick. You know, I tend to work very quick and messy during art snacks. You guys take that afterwards, you know, and make your own art. Do your own things in there. You can see how acrylic can really look pretty, pretty fascinating. Um... On the, let's do, I like the top. So I'm just thinking, I love this um, scissored cut. So what if here I want to do from my pocket, what if I decide to do kind of the basic curlies? Oh, she's got such good timing, doesn't she? I swear she knows when I come on with you guys. Hey, little girl. That's enough. Chloe. I'm just going to kind of put a couple, couple up here, just if I wanted this. And I can never have an even number. Let's see if I was to use this journal. Mm, that's just about, just about there. But I could kind of creep it over here, maybe. We'll see. We'll see what happens there. That might be kind of cool. All right. Just kind of grabbing. Grabbing whatever I have right in front of me. This is a little more flab out of the seat. Let's see. Can you see me coloring, mixing? Yes. 
And I will get back to looking at, it's a little tricky to see comments, how I have things set up today. Um, what do I want to do? What if I just, that's kind of boring. I don't think I'll continue with that one, really. Well, it might be fun. It might be fun later uh, with highlights on it, right? So let me just do three because sometimes I wonder if I'm OCD with the <laughs> compulsion of three. <laughs> Good grief. All right. Let's mix some of this red into this orange. And that yellow and that white. It might lighten it a little too much, but then let's just kind of, there we go. I kind of like that better. It's um, really loose. You know, my watercolor is nothing spectacular here. Let's come over here. And I am going to hit this one up. There we go. I'm just going to have an overall page here. So I'm going to have some that color. And I'm using a filbert brush. Some that color. And then um, I need a little bit more of something. Let's get into my bright neon. Right? Right. Because I love it. I love the neon. So this is an analogous. Last week we talked a lot about um, the color wheel. And this are the colors that are all kind of right next to each other on the color wheel. Not across from each other like we did last week, but right next to each other. And I know some of you might be looking at this going, wow, that's a mess. But trust the process, my friends. This is a good, um, this is one of those really super fun, good lessons to kind of, or pastimes, what's the, it's not a lesson, it's a, uh, you know, this is a good exercise for you guys to play with when you're feeling a creative block or you're not really sure what you want to do. That's when you kind of just grab papers, grab some other things, and you just start playing and see what happens. Trust me when I tell you it's going to unleash some amazing, amazing inner potential with you. It really will. I'm just going to, it's a little mintier than I want, but I like it. And if I just get my base down, what happens, what I want to show you is, there we go. I need a little there and I need a little bit there. And one, two, three, one, two, three. Let's, let's kind of put there. Um, when I put a little base down, and then I put it in my journal, you know, I'm gonna have whatever's behind it, I'll show you here in a minute, whatever's behind it kind of come into play and it's a whole different scenario. I kind of just come in here again, a little bit brighter and maybe here I want to do something totally random. Okay. And there. Okay. So super fast, super random. I know. This is the process, my friends. Because then once they start to dry, whether you work small and you decide to splatter. Like I just kind of splattered here, right? Well, this is kind of drying a little bit. Let me just take this one because it's dry enough. And let me just show you. I could take my neon pens, okay? 
and come in. Maybe. Not that one. That must have been. There we go. Okay. Try different color. Try colors you don't typically use. Try using, you know, to get yourself out of that creative funk, which is something that I talked about in the email that I sent out today. I'm just going to kind of come around. Um, it, if you if you have like a little bit of a creative funk that you're not really sure why it's there or what to do about it, well, you just need to sit and play and you need to play with colors you don't typically play with and you need to not worry about what you're creating. No, I'm not letting this, I didn't let this dry, so I'm trying to be careful. How am I doing on time? See, I only have five minutes, but it really shouldn't have taken me that long. I just started late. I don't want to keep you guys too long. Technically, I have seven minutes. Okay, so I just want to show you, like, you can use, and I love gel pens for, like, for this. And this neon set that I have... I don't know if it came together or if I just was attracted to them or it's all they had at the left <laughs> at the store that day. But I do love, 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 love those neons. Um, our Posca pens can do some really cool things. If I wanted to kind of outline this, right? And kind of bring that down and I could cut this whole brick out. Um, you can mix and match. So you could have some leaves, right, with Posca pen. different. Enough. Ooh, there we go. There. Okay. Now over here, I'm going to have to use the dryer for a second. Where are you? There you are. I don't know why it's not plugged in. I just don't want to ruin my stuff, so I'm going to just flood it a bit to get some of it dry. It dries pretty quickly, so I apologize for having to use the dryer. I didn't think I would. To tell what kind of mood I'm in today by the colors I use. All right, that's good enough. So what I really want to show you is this here. So I'm going to use scissors to cut just to get it started. You get the general idea. Black pen works really cool on this too, of course, whether you choose to use black Posca my gold pasta is there. Um, I have the zig. This is really thick, but it could be kind of a cool, different kind of look. Right? So play, because I urge you to play so much because you are going to find what you like and what you don't like. And it's really important to figure out your creative style. You see so many ideas and things online and that's wonderful. But at some point, 
you have to find your style, right? So that's totally random and different, but I kind of like it. Okay, I want to show you. These are going to, this, I see retro, like, and I haven't done the retro yet, but there's something there that's very retro to me. All right, so if I grab, let's say this, all right, so I'm going to cut it a little bit shorter. Now, one thing I teach in creatives and I tell my members often, we do sew, we sew a lot. I'm going to take more off of this side. Um, you know, if we sew, but if you're not a sewer, you know what works great to glue in a pocket is your hot glue gun. I don't have it plugged in or anything, but your hot glue gun works wonderfully. If you plan on, um, sewing it or anything, you can always just tack it down with a little bit of tape, or you could just use your adhesive tape in the corners. You could use your glue stick. Your Yoohoo glue stick will hold really well. Um, there's something about the glue gun, though, that gives you that bead, and it kind of helps give you like a seal. This is acting up on me. There we go. So I'm just, I actually went around the whole thing. If I was sewing, I probably wouldn't go around quite the whole part. All right, so there, now I have my pocket. Okay, you see that over a piece. So I've got the beautiful in between. Now I can play off of these shapes and colors that I have onto the page that I just did. So kind of picking up this kind of color, and I'm not sure. Yep, that'll work. Let's see, so picking up some of these squares, maybe I just want to grab a couple, right? Oops, let's kind of bring that down. Okay, there's just a few. It kind of rep, right? See that repetition? I wish I had at my, well, I have this clip, but it's not going to do much for me. <laughs> um, what do we want to put inside here? Where's my magenta? I think, I think I can pull off some magenta. And so maybe I want to do this kind of flower. Okay. I'm just gonna let it come around. All right, and we'll do the same thing here. We'll kind of run this one this way. We'll run this this way. And here. All right. And last. There we go. Okay. And I want to repeat some of those splatters. If this was a thicker one, I could easily get like a splatter. Um, but for now, what if I just kind of try to put a little repetitive... There we go. Now it's splattering. One, two, three, and let's kind of come up here. All right. So do you see how I'm kind of building the two things together? Um, and then maybe a gel pen because I have it. And I want to use it I'm being real loose because I've splattered so I have my hand far away let's do one here 
Okay. And then I think I would come back in and add some other things, but I want to show you. Do I have anything laying around? I have a plain white card, but that's kind of boring. Can you see? And it's still a little wet, but if you have something gorgeous in there, now we have a cool pocket. Isn't that fun? So super easy um, way to, I need to let this dry because it's really, it's got some really wet dots there, but just a fun way to add a pocket to your journal pages, okay, with some deli paper. Super simple. All right, my friends, let's kind of do the flip, dip, and scroll. <laughs> All right. Anybody have any questions that I didn't see? I'm going to check that out. Let's see. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Okay. I see, I see people kind of speaking, but I am not, or watching, but I'm not really seeing any comments. I'll check after the live, but yes, deli paper, super fun kind of get in there, have fun playing with uh, different shapes. They're great for your journals. You can use a whole image, all right? Or you can create your own little mess. And now that I'm looking at this through the camera, I can see where I want to kind of fade things and mix things together a little bit more. But it's, an, like I said, a very simple way to add a pocket to your journals with deli paper. Super fun and don't be afraid to try every supply, any every medium that you have on deli paper or different kinds of papers and make some pockets. All right, that's it. I think I got there in just about 30 minutes. I was just five minutes behind, but in 30 minutes, we have a super cool pocket in a journal. You could do a ton of different things with it. You guys get in there, create, play, experiment, get messy, and have fun today. All right, I'll see you later. Thanks for joining. Bye.